Starting at the web map from the previous video, we're now going to make this into a web app builder app. So to do this, um, there are two versions of web app builder, one that's hosted on ArcGIS Online, and one called the developer edition, which you can download and modify yourself. So first we're going to go over the hosted version on ArcGIS Online. Um, to get there, once you're in your web map, you can click share and make a web application button. Then there's this web app builder tab. So it's already filled in our title tags summary for us. I'm going to click get started and we're brought into the web app builder for our GIS. So over here we can see we have our web map and this is kind of the interface um, surrounding it. That's the app that Web App Builder is building for you. You can customize the style of that um, with this left pane as well as changing the layout, um, different themes. Web App Builder works around these widgets. So we have two widgets here, legend and layer list. There's widget slots as well here. The widgets pane is where you configure exactly what widgets are going to show up where. So we can see we have these two slots available. If you click that, I can add, for example, a bookmark widget here. And then there it is. What Web App Builder lets you customize also is name, logo, uh, the map that's loaded in. We're using the uh, app from, map from the previous video, but you can choose other ones that you've saved on your account. And going back to the widgets, these are customizable. So if you click the pencil icon um, of these widgets, you can actually add new bookmarks and uh, for this particular one, um, but the settings will be different for every widget. So besides just seeing what it's going to look like um, in, the in the browser, we can see what preview it and see what it will look like on mobile devices. So here it is on an iPad size device. Uh, we can make it see what it looks like on a phone. And Web App Builder makes apps that are responsive. So as you can see here, the UI fits the screen depending on what size of device you have. You can get to the other widgets here. It's just a different way of looking at it when it's at a smaller screen size, but the map is still fully accessible. So that's the hosted version of Web App Builder. The developer edition uh, can be found on the developer site. If you go to documentation, I've already downloaded Web App Builder, so I'll go there now. Once you unzip the file, you'll find there's a startup.bat file which you'll use to launch Web App Builder. So we'll start it up and should open a new browser window. The first thing you'll have to specify is your organization or portal URL. If you're using a developer account, you can find this by clicking on your profile name and then the account URL path. So that's been filled in already. So for app ID, we're going to have to create a new app. That can be found by clicking the applications button. And we see we've already have an ECC app challenge. Um, that's from previously opening up the hosted version of Web App Builder. So we'll go there and click register application. There we have our client ID. Paste that into the box. Click continue. We get an error message in valid redirect. So to fix this, we need to go to authentication tab under the application you're using and enter in the machine name for current redirect URIs. So we're going to add in 
machine name can be found here, the URL. We're going to use that HTTP and HTTPS. Now when we refresh this, continue. We now get this request for permission. And this is Web App Builder asking for the ability to access your ArcGIS Line account that you're using. So we'll approve that. And now we are in Web App Builder Developer Edition. So we're going to create a new app. And once this loads, we'll see that we're in the same type of environment that we were in on the hosted version. It should look exactly the same with the same widgets and themes. We haven't chosen the right web map, so we can go in here and choose our EC app challenge map. But the rest of the interface is the same. So I'm going to save that go back to the main screen. So now with this screen we can create a whole bunch of web apps here but the one we just created we want to download and modify. So I'm going to hit this button and then the download link. And Once that's downloaded I'll give you a zip of all the code behind that app. I'm going to go there and unzip it to my server. Take all these files. Extract. And I'll create a new web app builder folder. And unzip it, those files isn't files into there. Once that's done, we can go and view the app on our local server. So we've just been used the default widgets. These are already created for us. But to create your own, that's really the benefit of using the developer edition is now we can go into the widgets folder and here are all the widgets that were already created for us. We can add our own widget. And the, actually the Web App Builder installation has um, a sample widget you can use. So inside of this path, there is a sample widgets directory. And you can use the custom widget template. Copy this as the base for the widget you're going to develop. And this structure is how all of the other widgets, all the other widgets follow the same structure for organizing their code. So all the actual codes in the JS file, the widget.js file, and the HTML will structure the markup. So I'm going to open up the widget.js file. And you can see these functions here, methods to communicate with app container. And these are methods you'll you'll use and uncomment when you actually go ahead and start putting in your own code. On the uh, home screen of the web app builder page, if I go back to the documentation. There's a guide that has some um, help for widget development. So I recommend you read through this um, to get comfortable how Web App Builder works and how it uses widgets. There's also themes you can develop to change how it looks. And some sample code you can use. 